Koppel, host of the Time for Coffee podcast, where you get firsthand career advice into the jobs and industries that interest you the most. And before we start today's show, I have a quick favor to ask you. If you haven't already, I'd be incredibly grateful if you give us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you're like me, you need to do it now because you'll forget later and because it's the best way to help others who may be in search of career advice to find this free resource. So press pause if you haven't done it and do it right now. I'll wait. Thanks so much and enjoy today's show. Hey there, Java Junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or ten minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Josh Lebs. So what was your first job? After you graduated, Josh, and how did you get it? So I am different this way. I have this very deep relationship with my instincts. And I just had this realization one day, oh, I'm going to move to Atlanta after college. I knew no one in Atlanta. I knew the Olympics were going to be happening in Atlanta. And I knew that therefore there would be opportunity. So I was just like, I'm going to just take off and move to Atlanta with nothing. But I knew I wanted to go into broadcasting. So I got some jobs that were part-time. I was selling tickets at a comedy club, worked for a few months using my languages to help the Olympics. But then my first real job was that I knew I wanted to break in. I decided I wanted to break in at NPR. So I showed up at the local public radio station during a pledge drive. And I said, I will volunteer. I'll take out the trash. Like I just want to hang out around here. So they started letting me be a fixture around there while I was still paying the bills by doing those other things. And after several months, I found an opportunity to do something on air. And then they gave me a shot. They heard it. They said, oh, you don't suck at this. You're actually okay at this. All right. And they said, feel free to do more of these. And they thought I might do one a month, but instead I started doing like five reports a day. So boom, bam, boom, I'm on the air every day. That's my first job, my first career, my first everything. This is Cups and Ice. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is... You want me to go into Cups and I do. <laughs> okay. So I ended up giving a TEDx talk years later about this. But the idea is that you can take what sounds like a tiny opportunity and turn it into something huge. And people don't realize this. And the example that I use is from this TV show, Friends, which this young generation knows now because you're watching it on HBO. Anyway, it's the best example of this. There's this episode where Phoebe wants to help give a party throw a a birthday party, but Monica won't let her help. And Phoebe really wants to. And Monica finally says, okay, fine, you can be in charge of cups and ice, which sounds like it's nothing. Like most people would just pick up the cups and ice. But Phoebe turns the entire party into cups and ice. People are wearing cups as hats. There's every kind of ice. There's shaved ice and dry ice. And they have snow cones. Everything about the party is cups and ice. And so what I did in my career was that I cups and iced it. When they said, go ahead and do this more, they didn't say only once a month. They just said, do it more. So I started working around the clock. I was on the air constantly. I went on the air right before I turned 24. And two months later, I started with the network. I just called the folks in Washington. I said, I'm on the air here in Atlanta. Can I help? And they said, okay. And then by a month after that, I was doing reports for the network regularly. And a couple months after that, I was only doing reports for the network. So I was doing all national reporting that same year. So I had you know, gone from taking out the trash and volunteering for months and months and months to finding an opportunity to boom, cups and icing it and creating a career. And then they had to pay me. They had to hire me because I was doing relevant work to them. It's such an incredible example. And it reminds me of another professional I interviewed, a number of them, the ones who have the grit and listen to their intuition, as you did, Josh, who decide, I'm going to do this and I'm not going to take no for an answer. And it's not that you have to be obnoxious. This guy, MK al who graduated from college just after 9-11 and his first name is Muhammad. Mm. 
Needless to say, it was a little hard for him to get a job. He decided he wanted to go into real estate. He was also in Atlanta and there was a very well-known and I don't remember his name. He's since deceased realtor, commercial guru who was Jewish living in Atlanta and Mohammed decided he wanted to work with this guy. So he proceeded to show up every single day as soon as the office opened and he asked for a few minutes of time with this gentleman. And he did that for an entire week and he stayed in the office all day long, all day long. Mm -hmm. And he finally got five minutes. The man became his mentor. Mohammed is now a hugely successful real estate guy living in the Middle East. So wow, it is possible to cups and ice it, but I don't think a lot of people have that They don't want to be rude. Right. They don't want to be rude. And also, no one's ever taught them to stop and realize that a small opportunity can be a huge one. You know, some of us have heard this line about like having a small, there are no small parts, just small actors. The idea that you can do a lot with a couple lines in a movie. Like Marilyn Monroe started her career with, I think, one line in a movie, some walk around. But what they don't realize is that in most types of jobs, if you go by exactly what the person said, you can realize that it's much bigger than it sounded. and you can take anything, any little project that you're given. Like, you know, if someone as an intern or as a new low level employee, if you're given one task and you nail it and you get credit for it and you share it with others and they point out, look what a great job this person did. There's so many ways to do that. I I will say also that I had some, and a lot of graduating college students too, I think I had some hubris going into it that I thought I would be better at it at first than I was, which is why probably the number one smartest thing I did was I chose to work with the hardest editors at NPR. I was like, I asked people who are the toughest editors and those are the ones I pitched to. And they, in the early days, would have me redo my scripts two or three times. Because I was like, I don't just want to do this. I want to learn how to do it well. Have a vertical learning curve. Learn, learn, learn. So this Mohammed person probably had a lot to learn from this man's mentor. Work really hard to learn. Don't assume that you already know how to do it great. Trust your instincts that it's the right field for you, but focus on learning from people around you who are successful in a real modest way, in a way that sets aside a humility and allows yourself like soak up these lessons. And it was only because I worked extra hours to improve every line that I got to a place where a year later, they could trust me as an NPR correspondent and give me the toughest stories. So, you know, don't just get yourself the opportunity. Also make sure that when you have it, you know how to do it. And you work your ass off. Work your ass off. You have to operate on the assumption that you will get an opportunity and start learning, learning, learning. Because otherwise you get the opportunity and then you suck at it. And then there goes that entire experience. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to this latest episode of T4C. And if you're interested in learning more about my coaching services for confused college students and recent grads, feel free to check out the Time for Coffee website under the coaching tab at time, the number four, coffee.org or text me at 202-236-5712. That's 202-236-5712. Thank you.